Good morning to you from Mission Control Houston. It is Monday, July 23rd, 2012. This is a live look inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center. We want to welcome you to today's ISS update. It is a uh, busy day for the crew of Expedition 32 on board the International Space Station. This team here uh, in Houston today is being led by Flight Director Tony Sikachi. He is there on the right-hand side. Uh, sitting beside him is Tomas Gonzalez-Torres. He is the uh, on-console uh, flight director that is uh, training. He, of course, uh, is a former spacewalk officer. Namely, he did STS-125, which was the... Uh, final mission to the Hubble Space Telescope, uh, but he's been learning how to be a flight director over the last several months, and he is uh, training there with uh, Tony Sikachi. The crew on board currently consists of Gennady Padalka, Sergey Revin, and uh, Joe Acaba, which you see there on the far right-hand side. There's Revin and then Padalka second from the right, Joe Acaba there in the middle. Uh, the newest half of Expedition 32 is there on the left-hand side. That is Aki Hoshide on the far left side of the screen. Yuri Malenchenko there, second from the left, and Sonny Williams there uh, in the middle, right beside Akaba. The big news of today is that the crew is in the middle of operations getting ready for the redocking of the Progress 47 cargo vehicle. Uh, that cargo craft undocked from the station, the pier's docking compartment, uh, last night uh, at 3.25 p.m. Central Time. It backed away from that docking compartment, performed a 16-second automated separation burn uh, as it backed away from the Russian segment of the International Space Station. And it moved out to a distance of about 100 miles away from the orbiting complex. It is going to be redocking uh, later on tonight at 8.58 p.m. Central Time. We'll have live coverage here on NASA TV at 8.15. PM. The reason it is doing this is to test out some brand new Coors equipment uh, that is on that Progress spacecraft. Coors is the uh, device and the technology that allows these Progress and these Soyuz to automatically rendezvous and dock with the ru Russian segment of the International Space Station. They have upgraded uh, some of these systems that will allow it to uh, perform an easier uh, docking and also use uh, fewer antennas on board. So this uh, Progress 47 backed away yesterday afternoon and will redock uh, tonight uh, to the very same docking compartment. Again, we'll have live coverage uh, tonight beginning at 8.15 p.m. Central Time with the actual redocking taking place at 8.58 p.m. Central Time. In order to support this, the crew has a split shift uh, of a uh, sleep period today. The Russian crew will go to sleep at uh, 10 a.m. Central Time, uh, about one hour from now. They'll sleep for about five and a half hours. They're going to wake up at 3.30 uh, p.m. Central Time. They will support the uh, progress redocking that we just talked about, and then they'll go back to sleep at about 10.30 p.m. Central Time, and will sleep for nine and a half hours, waking up uh, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Central Time. The U.S. side of the crew will go to sleep at their normal time of 4.30 p.m. Central Time later on today. They'll sleep for about three hours and 15 minutes. They will wake up at 7.45 p.m. Central to support the progress. And then they will go back to sleep at 9.15, sleep for about five hours, 15 minutes, and then we'll wake up about an hour and a half later than they normally would at 2.30 a.m. Central time. So a, a split schedule for the crew today. Uh, all of this in order to support this progress redocking, which will take place later on tonight. However, there is some... Uh, Experiment work taking place today while the crew is up uh, getting ready for tonight's activities. Sandy Williams has been working on an experiment that we've talked about before called BASS. This is the burning and suppression of solids experiment. Uh, this is one in which they take a look at how flames behave in space. There's different types of uh, materials that they burn up there. There's different types of fuel samples. This uh, experiment is very interesting because it takes a look at how you extinguish a fire, which uh, fire obviously behaves quite a bit differently up in space. Here on Earth, if there's a flame, you typically would aim your extinguisher or whatever you're using to put it out down at the base of the flame. That's because that's where the air enters the flame. It's where the flame is most uh, stable. But of course, up in space, you don't have that kind of effect. So uh, how you would put out a fire up there in zero gravity uh, is quite a bit different. This is a look inside that glove box where the uh, bass experiment resides. Uh, you see one of these uh, small spheres, these fuel spheres burning as uh, Sonny Williams performed this experiment up there in the weightless environment of space, taking a look at these flames. Williams is also busy taking some sound measurements today using what's called an acoustic dosimeter. She's also reviewing procedures for medical ultrasound operations, and uh, she also has a ham pass later on today where she will uh, use the ham radio on board to talk with some students 
and some uh, people at the Rochester Institute of Technology there in New York. And she's also working on an experiment called VIABLE that stands for the Evaluation and Monitoring of Microbial Biofilms inside the ISS. And she also has some crew orientation time, which, you know, having just been there for a few days, she and the rest of that uh, Expedition 32 crew is uh, still getting used to their environment up there. Uh, of course, most of them have been up there before, but they still take some time to uh, learn the new surroundings and the emergency procedures and all of that. Aki Hoshide is working on the functional checkout of the diagnostic kit and medical laptop on board. He is uh, reviewing reference material for the integrated cardiovascular experiment, which is one of the experiments on board that takes a look at how the human body and namely the uh, heart and the muscles and the veins react to being up in space. And he is also doing some onboard training, getting ready for the arrival of the Japanese HTV cargo ship, which you see there uh, broken out the different sections that pressurize the logistics carrier, which you see on the far left-hand side. That is the uh, portion that will be mounted to the space station. There's also an exposed pallet down there in the unpressurized logistics carrier. This HTV can carry up items both pressurized and unpressurized, and the crew will take care of unloading all of that cargo over the next uh, several weeks. But HTV launched last uh, last Friday night, which you're seeing a uh, playback of here. It was uh, quite a rainy and cloudy day there uh, at the Tanegashima Space Center. But the uh, Japanese HTV-3 cargo craft on board its H-2B rocket, which is just a, a gigantic rocket, did lift off on time a little after 9 p.m. Central Time. That was 11 a.m. there locally. Quite a cloudy day. There was some rain in the area, and the rocket disappeared into the clouds just a few seconds after liftoff. But it did have an uneventful and successful 15-minute ride into orbit. It is uh, currently on its way toward the International Space Station, and then it will rendezvous and berth uh, Friday evening. We'll have live coverage of that, of course. The grapple scheduled for 7.05 a.m. Central Time, 8.05 a.m. Eastern Time there Friday morning. Joe Acaba will be in charge of actually performing the robotics operations, uh, grappling that cargo craft, and then Aki Hoshide will take over after that, and he will be the one actually installing it on the Harmony node of the International Space Station.